Hey, welcome to my laundry room. Uh, I'm out of space. Nowhere really else to film this. And it has decent light in here above the uh, washer dryer. So I thought I'd just throw the dome on here and make the video here. This project started in 2017. Um, science fiction fans will probably recognize this as the dome from R2-D2. Uh, 2017 I was looking for something to do with my 3d printer and on Thingiverse I found Michael Baddeley's files for making a life-size R2-D2 um, I thought that was about the coolest thing I'd ever seen and I figured well maybe I'll give it a shot so like most people or a lot of people that uh, build R2-D2s, they start with a dome, because if you decide after doing the dome that it's you don't want to finish the project, you've at least got an R2-D2 dome you can show off. So that's what I did. Uh, 2017, I used eSun PLA Plus 0.3 resolution, printed this out. Um, there are six of the main dome pieces in a circle that get glued together, and then the uh, Pi panel support structure is two pieces that are glued together and then that's glued down to the dome. Uh, after that I sanded. I used 150 grit. I used 220 grit. I did it all by hand. It was taking hours and hours. And then I needed a break from sanding so I put it up on a shelf and there it sat. And I got involved in other projects, mostly arcade related, as the other stuff on my channel is mostly arcade. And this just kind of sat there, and I forgot about it, and every once in a while see it up on the shelf and think, oh yeah, maybe I should uh, continue on with that. But I never did, so it just, it just sat there um, until just recently. It's now... August of 2020 and last month I decided you know what I'm kind of out of room for arcade projects and maybe I should look at uh, finishing this R2-D2 so I looked online and I found I found that there is now a new version from the one that I had downloaded in uh, 2017. The dome is the same. There's still the, this is the version 2 dome. Actually, there is a version 3 dome, but it's made for even larger printers than I have. It's made for the Creality, uh, what is it, the 5S. It's 500 by 500 millimeter bed size. It can print the entire dome without splitting it into any files, all in one print. Uh, then there's a new Mark III body and legs, and that printer can print the entire body. Uh, it does it in three rings. Each ring fits on the printer, and then you glue the three rings together and it makes up the body. So, huge printer. Uh, when I did this dome, I had a Robo 3D R1 Plus. And it was barely big enough to print the pieces of this dome sliced into six pieces. Um, there's another version that slices it even, even more. There's a cut about here. So here down, here up, and then these two pieces. But I thought I'd go ahead and try this on my printer. And again, it just barely fit. And to get it on the bed, there's a couple spots where... I actually hit an end stop because this curves as a print. So it was on the bed in a nice position, but I didn't really think through about the curve. So by the time I got to the top and the curve, uh, I hit the Y end stop, I think it was. Or was it the X? Maybe it was the X end stop. Anyway, I hit end stop and I ended up having to put a bunch of Bondo in one of the joins between two panels. Uh, because it kind of missed a step and it 
just basically messed up the shape. So I, I fixed that in 2017 along with all the sanding and then that's where it's at. So first thing I started to do was uh, prime the dome because it was still plastic. It was still just white PLA plus plastic. So I spray painted it gray or actually rust colored is what's the first primer I used. Because white, it makes it really hard to see imperfections on white color because it's so bright. They just kind of blend in. So painted it with rust colored primer and it was about in the state that I remembered it was. It wasn't absolutely terrible. It wasn't, you know, something that could be finished really quickly. So I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. So I've spent more time sanding using bondo glazing putty which right now is the the red you see this white is actually sanded down to the plastic because this is the worst the worst join either this one or the one over here actually i think the one over here is yeah this is the worst join on the dome and there's this area right in here i can feel is not it's fine up to about the midpoint. There's a slight depression here and here it's higher. You can see it's higher on this side than it is on this side. That's right now. I think that's about the best I'm going to get it. And it's not too bad, but it will kind of be visible once it's, once it's actually painted silver. Silver shows off, unfortunately, a lot of imperfections. So yeah, as I was working on this, um, Apart from, it's not just sanding the, the dome, there's all the, where all the panels go, top and bottom, there's these insets that the panels sit on. And so all of those have to be nice and sharp, or should be nice and sharp, uh, if you want it to look really nice. So working on those, working on the round parts, putting out some glazing putty, sanding things off, giving a coat of primer... Uh, first I did the rust, then I did some, some of this glazing putty, then I did the gray primer. Now I did some more glazing putty. Um, I still have to go. There's some areas, like I was saying, along these um, panel lines that I have to get a little tool right in here and clean up. I've got a little sanding stick I 3D printed that I can sand the little areas in there. So i got to do that a little bit more and then see any other areas that need glazing putty probably just in these areas, um, the pie panels and these bottom panels, and then give it another coat of gray primer and see where I'm at. But what I started to do, I decided I'm going to go ahead and print the body. Even if this dome, with all the hours I have into it, even if it I just you know give up or it breaks because I'm spending so much time sanding it, and sometimes I'm sitting down, I've got it on my knee, and you just don't think about how you're putting pressure on it. Um, if I break it, then I'm still, I've decided to go ahead and print the body and, and actually commit to the project. So I have started printing the body. I'm making this video after I've printed several parts of the, of the body, but I'll post this video first because this is where it all began with the dome in 2017. So I just want to kind of show where the dome is at. I know it looks, it probably looks terrible, you know, on video with all these, all these rust colored areas. Those are all just like imperfections, which is, you know, you have to decide when is enough enough. You know, are you going to spend just hours and hours and days and days and weeks trying to get it absolutely perfect? How far are you going to go? How far is acceptable? It's R2-D2. It's a, you know, it's a droid. You don't need to make it showroom perfect. You know, it's it's been out there doing its job. It's been in some battles, whatever. I haven't decided if I'm going to weather it. I've never done weathering before, so of course weathering a full-sized R2-D2 is not exactly the first thing I want to try and weather, so I'd have to practice on some spare material, something first. But anyway, you don't, you don't need it to be factory fresh with every line perfect so that's that's the other reason i decided to go ahead and start printing the body because i'm happy enough with the state it's in now 
that if I just said, okay, I can't stand this anymore. I just got to, I got to paint it silver. I got to get the, the painting done on this and move on. It, it would be okay. The state it's in right now, it would, it would look fine. I would, I would accept, you know, like I said, there's, there's, look, there's going to be a couple visible seams, just like these two visible seams aren't quite perfect and the way they're off it's just I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it perfect and it really doesn't absolutely need to the rest of it the rest of it is is really nice actually the rest of it's really good um, so yeah first video showing the dome uh, blabbering on again because that's that's my style <laughs> record just start talking um I, hopefully i'll finish this project uh i have two printers now um i just printed part of the body well i'll save that for the third or fourth video uh where i talk about where i'm at with the body but yeah first video here's the dome i'm committing to the project i am going to print a life-size r2d2 I've spent a lot on electronics. Um, I haven't done anything motor-wise, but in 2017, I already bought a TESIS light kit and fully assembled it and tested it. Um, the TESIS light kit gives lights for the panels that had lights in them in the movie, color-changing lights, and one of the large panels that has a, a large display of yellow and green LEDs that randomly blink. Um, I had that already made. I'm making a couple Mark Duinos. Those are Arduinos that you can build yourself that will control not only those lights, but also servos. I've printed new pie panels. Um, originally I did print just normal panel blue panels for all the open spots um, I printed new ones for the top that are made to incorporate a hinge and I've printed hinges so hopefully they will line up right when I attach the hinge so that a servo can open and close them the Mark Duinos that I'm getting will control those opening and closing um, those routines people make where it'll play like the the cantina theme from Star Wars and different panels will open and close to the music while the lights are you know flashing that kind of thing so I spent quite a bit on electronics for the dome haven't bought servos yet but I have bought uh, the mp3 spark fun mp3 trigger an amplifier a ground loop isolator um, Yeah, two Mark Duino boards. I have the Tesis already. So, yeah, a lot of money. More than I thought. These things add up. I mean, the whole part of the point of this is it's not like an aluminum R2-D2, which would be wonderful to make, but they can, you know, cost ten to $25,000, um, depending on what you do with it and what kind of parts you buy. This one... I was hoping would be just a little over 500. Now I'm hoping it will be a little under a thousand by the time I'm done. Um, I did just order five rolls of filament. I had about six rolls that I got basically free with one of the two printers I have. And I've been using that so far. But I just ordered some more now that I've committed to the project and I know I'm going to need quite a bit of filament. I uh, read online 18 to 25 spools of filament it could take to do the whole thing. So, yeah, that's quite a bit of money in filament plus the electronics. And then you got paint and sandpaper and primer. And yeah, it really adds up. So if you're thinking of doing this and that, oh, it's 3D printed, it's going to be, you know, really cheap. Um, no, it's just not really cheap. It is less expensive than some other ways you could make one, but not really cheap. Uh, people also make them out of styrene, and they make them out of wood, and they make them out of combinations of them all. 
but this one should be all 3D printed. So uh, hopefully I will end this successfully. People also say about six to 12 months to finish one of these. And a lot of the body panels that I've been printing have taken anywhere from 12 hours to 22. One of the ones coming up is going to be the largest in size and longest time to print of anything I've ever printed. The estimate for my slicer program is one day and 22 hours to print one piece of the body. So that's the biggest piece. So that's going to be interesting. You just, you just cross your fingers and hope you don't lose power. Printer I'm printing it on doesn't uh, pick up after a power failure like my other printer does. So that's, I uh, see I'm over about 15 minutes here, so I will cut it off there. Uh, wish me luck, and hopefully I will end up with a nice 3D printed R2-D2 in about a year. Ugh. <laughs>